For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. My name is Zoe and welcome back to Around the World in 8 Minutes, where we bring you stories of struggle and resistance, of common people united in their rejection of this unjust system. For our first story, we take you to Colombia, where social movements are on the streets and highways across the country once again as part of a several days strike. Thursday's mobilization saw members of Colombian rural and peasant movements taking part in large numbers. They are demanding an end to the exploitation of their territories and natural resources by big business. They are also demanding agrarian reform to guarantee the survival of rural and peasant communities and the promotion of food sovereignty and a dignified life. Let's check out a video from the ground. Since Ivan Duque took office in August 2018, diverse sectors in Colombian society have been constantly mobilizing. One of the largest such mobilizations was the national strike which began a year ago on November 21st. During that strike, tens of thousands were on the streets across the country for several weeks to reject anti-worker neoliberal policies and to demand the implementation of prior agreements made by the government with different sectors. They also sought an end to the genocide of social leaders, human rights defenders and ex-combatants in Colombia as well as a guarantee of basic rights such as education, housing, food and employment. The government has yet to meet any of these crucial demands since this historic strike and conditions have only gotten worse. For an example, let's take a look at the numbers to do with violence. According to the Foundation Indepaz, between January 1st and November 15th of this year, 254 environmentalists, human rights defenders, indigenous, peasant and social leaders, as well as 56 ex-combatants of the FARC have been killed in Colombia. Mobilizations will continue over the next couple days to demand an end to Duque's anti-people policies as well as against the lack of political will to address the urgent and pressing issue of violence against communities. For our next story, we'll be looking at Palestine, where protests were organized against the controversial visit of U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to Israel. While many U.S. diplomats have visited Israel, Pompeo became the first top diplomat to, is to visit an illegal Israeli settlement in occupied Palestine. On Thursday, November 19th, Pompeo visited a winery in Pazagot settlement, located on the hill of Jabal Atawil. Following his visit to the legal settlement and winery, Pompeo announced that items produced in areas where Israel exercised the relevant authorities will be marked as made in Israel, clearly talking about settlements. Pompeo in his visit also called the BDS movement anti-Semitic and likened it to cancer. Preceding his visit to the legal settlement, hundreds of Palestinians gathered in Albire, a city neighboring Ramallah and close to Sagot. Israeli forces, you may be unsurprised to learn, responded to the protest with heavy repression. They fired tear gas and used force to disperse the protesters, injuring some. All recent U.S. presidents have staunchly supported the state of Israel economically, politically and militarily, but the administration of Donald Trump has stood out due to its particularly aggressive stance, evident in the shift of the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the unconditional support and encouragement of the construction of illegal settlements, and a much-talked-up deal of the century, which sought to undermine the historic demands of Palestinians. Finally, we take you to Argentina, where women, feminist activists and LGBTQ community members are back on the streets to urge legislators to discuss the voluntary termination of pregnancy bill. Yeah. 
This bill will legalize access to the essential right of abortion. The right to legal, safe, and free abortion has been a demand of feminist movements in Argentina for the past couple decades. It was presented to the legislature seven times before finally being brought to debate in 2018. Despite massive street protests in support of the bill, it was narrowly defeated in the Senate. The presentation of the bill was a campaign promise of President Alberto Fernandez, which he finally fulfilled on Tuesday, November 17th. On Wednesday, thousands gathered outside Congress in a massive pañuelazo, a traditional mobilization of the feminist movement where militants waved green scarves, representative of the feminist struggle for legal abortion. The bill is likely to be passed as the ruling coalition Frente de Todos has a simple majority in both the Chamber of Deputies and the Senate. Argentine authorities estimate that every year over 500,000 abortions are performed in unsafe and clandestine conditions. If passed, the law will guarantee a safe, regulated procedure rather than condemning hundreds and thousands of women to risk their lives. The struggle in Argentina has been a catalyst to intensify the demand for legal, safe, and free abortion across Latin America, where the right is mostly denied and sometimes even criminalized. Be sure to keep watching People's Dispatch and find us at our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Yeah,